Welcome folks to beautiful and historic Hammond Castle in Magnolia for a special Halloween episode of Short and Sweet, the Cape Ann Foodcast where we celebrate all things food and drink in and around Cape Ann. I am joined as always by Heather Atwood. How are you, Heather? I'm fine, thank you. I probably need a bath. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Happy Halloween to Happy you. Happy Halloween to you too. What yeah. are you? I don't know yet. I am um, apparently a, uh, a misguided scientist of some sort. <laughs> as the as a bloody lab coat. And then this was just happened to be it's, on the mantle. Yeah, it's perfect. It's yeah. perfect in Hammond Castle. Yeah. And I'm Bert, the chimney sweep, just in case <laughs> no one knew that. You can be one of four or five different things, I feel. That's true. Yeah. That, yeah. It's, an, it's, it's um, an evolution. This, yeah. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. So we have a few really cool things um, for everybody today. One is a uh, great connection that Heather has with the castle and some of the history here that deals with the food and the kitchen and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll get to that. And then um, we're gonna show off some of these amazing, if you can see this, David, the lady fingers. Dead, dead lady, lady fingers. fingers. That Heather yeah. actually made. And um, you went off of um, a local's recipe for this? Yep, this is a recipe um, from Laurel Tarantino. It's actually her sister-in-law's recipe, Jill Josephson. So we have to give them both credit yeah. because Laurel was the one who posted them on Facebook. And I said, okay, that's our recipe. Creepy, I, w I asked on Facebook for some creepy cookies. And this is what we got. Wild, this is really cool. You gonna take a bite? Here. Yeah. Here, I'll take a bite too. Cause nothing like eating a dead lady finger on Halloween, right? To start our show. What do you think? It's like a nice little sugar cookie. Mm -hmm. With almonds. Mm -hmm. Right? Very good, Heather. Not only are they creepy, but they're good. Yeah, I love them. Okay. And then we're going to end the show by rattling off some of everyone's favorite Halloween candies, all the um, standbys that you're used to, the traditional ones, and give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, see what you like out there. So, Yeah, we're going to do a real um, sort of breakdown of Halloween candy, yeah. right? We're going to taste them, we're going to uh, rate them, Yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so I want to start, though, because we are here in Hammond Castle, and when I go to places, the first thing I look for is the kitchen. So I was snooping around here before, when you guys were doing your show before, and mm -hmm. I was trying to find the kitchen, because I did a story once for the Gloucester Times on John Hammond's cook. John Hammond's cook, uh, her granddaughter actually lives in Gloucester. So I was able to interview Laura Lee Cotter, who is the granddaughter of Annie Sanderson. And Annie Sanderson was John Hammond's cook. And there's some really cute stories here. This is awesome. This is yeah. fascinating. Well, Annie, Sa Annie Sanderson was an amazing, um, just a strong, independent woman all on her own. She came to this country in, I think, 1905, hmm. when she was 16 years old. She got married, had seven children. When her youngest child was 11 years old, she went to work. And she went to work cooking in Gloucester kitchens. Her second job was at John Hammond, and she stayed there until she retired at 78. She, John Hammond loved her. She loved John Hammond. Laura Lee said she never heard her grandmother say an unkind word about Mr. Hammond except once. Oh. He was a famous recipe clipper, and he was often handing her recipes, saying, will you make this, will you make this? And there was some recipe that had beer in it. And Andy Sand Sanderson said in her Irish brogue, which I won't do. <laughs> I was hoping. It has beer in it, it won't work, I can't make it. And that was the only harsh word that uh, Laura Lee ever heard her grandmother say huh. about Mr. Hammond. So apparently, Annie had to purchase five pounds of haddock a week just for the castle cats. Oh, really? <laughs> and there was a, um, a specific salt that Mr. Hammond liked, so they would make it in these big batches. It was a seasoned salt that had dried parsley, garlic, onion, cayenne, and I believe oregano, and then five pounds of salt. And all these herbs were tossed together, and this was the Hammond Castle salt. My favorite story, is when Andy Sanderson was 78, she decided it was finally time to retire. And Laura Lee remembers her grandmother about two weeks afterwards, like pacing back and forth in her house, wringing her hands, saying, I should never have retired. I should never have retired. I wish I was 70 again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for an active woman, it's kind of funny. Right. She was able to buy her own home with, you know, after working, and uh, I think maybe she left her husband, but she owned a home on Rocky Neck. She was often 
on her one day off a week, she would escape into Boston and she would spend the night at the Lenox Hotel just to get away from everything. Not bad. But back to my favorite story. She retired at 78 and that, after she retired, Mr. Hammond went on the Metrical diet. He was often on a diet, but mm -hmm. this time he was choosing Metrical. He died a year later. <laughs> and Henny Sanderson was sure Whoops. it was a Metrical diet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Hammond, I, uh, I hope I got all the stories right. Here we are in your grand hall. That's awesome. We were really hoping that we could actually have spoken with her today to it just Lee. yeah it just couldn't have happened but um that's uh, what a great connection yeah yeah no she lives laura lee the granddaughter still lives in gloucester yeah. her mother was also john hammond's cook so she spent a lot of time in the kitchen as a little girl so huh. she was here and she remembers it but um she's a little shy so we were not able to get her on the show that's okay yeah maybe another time we'll be back here and, and can and pull this off again um did she mentioned all about any of the like the grandiose parties or anything or having to serve for a, Dozens and dozens of people. I don't think so because, uh, well, yes, she talked about her grandmother making swan meringues with, filled with whipped cream hmm. and like dozens and dozens of those swan meringues. That was a special thing that he would serve at the big parties. I think um, haddock poached in butter with lemon and parsley was a favorite dish okay. to served at parties, I believe. That was, um, you know, Gloucester haddock, right? Right. Um, I, she didn't talk, but you know, she was a little girl, and maybe it was more she was around when the parties weren't happening. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so she doesn't remember those. She remember remembers more about her grandmother's just day to day interactions here. Right. Oh, that's awesome. And the stuff. castle cats. And there was a German Shepherd. I saw a picture of the German Shepherd, and uh, Laura Lee was often taking. Um, hanging out with Boris, the German Shepherd. Oh, no kidding. There's yeah. actually, there's a patented robotic dog here too. Did you know that? I did not we, know that. We created one of those um, decades and decades ago, and that's actually, I think they bring that out every now and then. So we oh. have to, that might have to happen uh, in a future episode as well. Well, and then there's the legend in Gloucester about the robotic boats, right? Tell me. Well, apparently, maybe it was in the 50s when he first began to develop the, the robots. Mm -hmm. The Gloucester fishermen would be out in the harbor and they would see this boat pilotless and they were totally freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine, right? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think about being here today? Isn't this cool? It is amazing. What a setup. How about this set, right? I know. I know. It's a pretty beautiful place to have a show. Yeah, it's all decked out for their their Halls of Darkness um, event, their, the haunted uh, castle that they do every year here, too. So we're uh, we're lucky uh, and, and thankful for the castle to have us uh, here for an episode of Short and Sweet. Of course, Heather, we, there's, um, we want to talk about Halloween candy, et cetera, et cetera. And um, as you can tell, uh, Heather and I are a little into Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> we put each other up for it. We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we, I think... We confess to each other that neither one of us loves this, the, the whole costume thing, but we pulled it off. I'll tell you what happens with me. It's when Halloween actually arrives, I regret not having spent time thinking of a cool costume and having fun and all that. It's just, it's finding the time to do it. I totally agree. And to get creative the way I would want to be creative about it. Yeah. So, so actually, the one thing I wanted to do this year, I wanted to be like a, uh, a, a sock puppet. <laughs> just sock. A, my whole body would just be a sock puppet. <laughs> Well, thought about that. It now, how would you do that? I don't know. I think I'd have to find a, one way to get some giant argyle all over me. And like the shaggy eyelashes to like... Stick yeah, something it. like that too. And I don't yeah. know where, the, my head, where I'd be looking out from the mouth or something like that. Well, I, there is that person who thinks weeks in advance about their Halloween costume. I have friends. Literally, it's, they start talking about this when we're at the beach during the summer. Right? I know. Yeah. And I have never been that person. But I'm pretty proud of myself this time because I found the hat and the hat was my inspiration. Yeah. As I was saying before, I was going to be Abe Lincoln because of the hat. <laughs> there and was a makeup mishap. <laughs> exactly. And, <laughs> and then I was trying to create cheekbones and it just looked like dirt. So yeah. I decided, well, I'm a chimney sweep. It's funny. It's yeah. like his beard just ended up sort of all over you. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. it didn't work. How was the drive over to the castle today? What, did you get I any looks? I had some looks. looks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I definitely had some looks. So, because yeah, unfortunately people might recognize my car. Yeah. It's one thing if that's just a strange woman, but no, that's Heather out well, that's yeah, with the Michigan sticker on it. <laughs> what happened to her? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what do you think, Heather? Should we get into candy? you want to talk more about these lady fingers? I want to talk about the, the lady, lady fingers, fingers a little bit. Yeah, so, um, so and I'll show let's these to just, David, too. Yeah, give Laurel Tarantino one more little boost here and yeah. say it's a brilliant idea. 
we are going to post the recipe on the 1623 website, I yep. think. Can we, we do can that? we can do that. All right. And uh, I think they actually, I was worried that they wouldn't hold up because handmade stuff on Halloween, do you ever really want to pass that out because they're going to crumble in the kid's bag? Yeah, true. But these aren't bad. They're, um, I don't know if the kids are going to like them, but the parents might like them, right? I would think so. I mean, uh, I feel like you see these at, you know, when you're at an adult Halloween party, these yeah. There are these lady, these dead lady fingers out and about. The kids would like to see it too, because they're, so they're creepy enough, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you did, it's basically a sugar cookie, right? It's a sugar cookie, uh, really basic sugar cookie, brushed with egg white. The important part are the knuckles. So you have to take the back of a knife and score. Oh, right, 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 right. That's what really makes it a finger. People think it's the almond on top that's yeah. been dipped in red food coloring, but I think it's the knuckles. That's awesome. Well, yeah. you can let us know as well, too. If you if you do your own certain things for Halloween, share them with us. You know, we might be able to um, spin that into a story somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send us recipes or send us pictures. Even better. Yeah, and even now as we get towards the holiday season, like where people want to see us and do an episode of Short and Sweet somewhere on the fly. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. send us ideas. That's because, awesome. Because... Uh, we're, we're looking for recipes, we're looking for people to interview, so, and places to go, yeah. right? Now, the other thing I was thinking of is dressing up as, I wanted to be a giant candy corn. I couldn't find the costume in time. They usually make them for kids, they're like onesies. But I really need to know what your stance is on candy. It's the most divisive of all the Halloween candy. Where do is you stand? Is it divisive? I think, so. oh my God, it'd be, it's love or hate. Oh, so it's sort of like a peep thing? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, huh. I love candy corn. Do you really? Yeah. I also love candy corn. But now you just popped it all in your mouth. I bite into it color by color. You never do and that. And so does our 1623's own Lisa Smith. She left, but that's what she does really? too. Yes. She eats it color by color? Does it taste any different? I, okay. I bit off the yellow and naturally divided the orange and the white. Hmm. It's like tying a cherry stem with your tongue, but I can do that with candy corn. I know. That's, it, it's the whole, it's the, the taste of the whole triangle in your mouth. Yeah. That to me is what's wrong. I don't know. All right, I have a story to tell about these. These are dark, dark chocolate Kit Kat bars. So have you ever had a dark chocolate Kit Kat bar? I don't think so. Right? And I do like dark chocolate. All right, so taste this and tell me what you think. Okay. It looks good. Yeah. It smells, oh, there we go. It smells fly up. It smells dark chocolatey. I'm into that, Heather. Yeah? I can eat those. Is it an improvement on the Kit It's an improvement on the regular Kit right? Kat. My daughter, when she was nine years old, she said, why does a Kit Kat bar only come in milk chocolate? Yeah. And she wrote to them. Oh, hi. And we don't know, <laughs> but soon after that, Kit Kat came out with a dark chocolate bar. They're way better. Are Aren't these they in better? white chocolate too? I haven't seen a white chocolate one. I wouldn't. It's the bastard I wouldn't. chocolate. It's what? The bastard chocolate. Is exactly. White chocolate. I wouldn't advocate for a white chocolate Kit no. Kat bar. No. But that was pretty good. Yeah, right? that's better than the regular Kit Kat. Yeah. So isn't it interesting that there is no new Halloween candy, except this is a little bit new. Yeah. There's just new ways of packaging them. Yeah. It seems this to is be. a fluorescent. Reese's peanut butter cup in a fluorescent package. So yeah. it glows in the dark. And as the package says, it's supposed to light up your party. Now we were trying this. We went into dark corners. There's a billion dark corners here in the castle. We right. were looking. You can see a little faded neon on the packaging. But we were hoping that you would actually uh, eat the peanut butter cup or bust it open. And then, you know, like plutonium, it would just kind of glow yeah. bright green at you. Yeah, that didn't happen. I think Reese's needs to just stick to the original. They but can't do it. it. But this is the only thing I could find that's new. Now, isn't that kind of amazing that since we were kids, there is no new Halloween candy? It's a good point. Right? You know, some of the other non-traditional candies, they'll, they'll try sneaking in to, you Never know. Never works. What do you got in the, here? The bags and baskets. So in here we have, yeah, I can show Whoppers. you some things that I don't like. Like things like Whoppers. That's I don't, just too small. Are these the, um, this is the malt, right? Yeah. Anything malt I'm not a fan of, personally. But that's me. How about, um, do we have a Milky Way here? No, the most underrated of the of the traditional candy bars. I right? feel. Right, yeah. I know we don't have a Milky Way. What's the consensus on Whoppers on the set? Yep, yay or nay? Yeah. It's a thumbs down and eh, yeah. just okay, man. Yeah. Whoppers, thumbs oh, up. Thumbs up. Oh, David, David's eh. Either way, Alana well, says yes. Interesting. Okay, how about Snickers? 
I th I'm a thumbs up. Totally thumbs, thumbs up. up. Thumb two thumbs up. Like, I get you. Oh, either way, Matt Becky, says no. yeah. When Matt says yeah. no, that might be breaking news. Nuts. David says yeah. no, yeah. We he can't do well, nuts. We, yeah. Alana loves them. I think I used to be so happy when people handed me a Snickers bar as a kid. They right? feel the heaviest of every candy they bar. They do. That's, so you're thinking, oh my God, here. So I'm not a, a Snickers guy. Like I wouldn't go out and buy one unless I like hadn't eaten the previous three meals. I was this like, is okay. I got to eat something. I'll have a Snickers bar. I can pretend it was. It's lunch. almost a granola bar. You, you, you think so? Well, it's kind of the original granola. It's, it's got nuts in it. Yeah. So it's the healthier of a, of any of this stuff. Yeah, and then Snickers, they went crazy, and they had to have 70 flavors of that too. Yeah, Whereas but none of them work. Just, yeah, they don't yeah. work. They returned to the original. Yeah. All right. So how about um, what we don't have here? No, Baby Ruth. That's maybe the original one. How do we feel about baby, the original granola bar turned Baby Ruth, bar. folks. Oh, uh, Linda likes it. Stickers. Lynette says no. Matt, uh, no, he no. said no. Alana's yeah. a yes. David's See, a no. Alana and I are aligned. Yeah, me too. I'm the same way. Wait, yeah. which president's daughter or granddaughter was this named after? Was it FDR's daughter, or granddaughter? That's Baby Ruth. It's not. People think it's Babe Ruth or something. It's not. It's, it's Ruth was one of the president's granddaughters from back in the oh. 20s or 30s or something. So That's you, what the candy's named after. You have trivia. That goes it. along with the candy bars. Yep. All right. But um, not a fan though. Personally. Well, I love them. So Snickers and Baby Ruth on my side. Um, What's in the Baby Ruth again? Let's open it up. Is Can this the coconut up? one? No, that's Mounds. But what? So what is the Baby Ruth though? Mounds and Almond Joy are coconut. Mounds, uh, Baby Ruth has nuts in it. Um, we all right with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what time are we out, Lana? You don't think people want to watch us eat candy for another couple hours? <laughs> <laughs> so it's all like right, peanut butter and nuts. It's like peanut nougat and nuts. What's a poor man's Snickers? It is, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Because Snickers has the actual gooey caramel. Where else had there come one fine nougat other than in two or three candy bars? In a Middle Eastern grocery store. Oh, really? Mm hmm. What is a nougat? Egg white and nuts and sugar. Oh, well, that's all. I'm pretty sure. Huh, I'm learning yeah, today. I hope I'm right about that. So there are some candy bars that are missing here. Um, the 100 Grand Bar, which oh, is one yeah. of the underrated ones. That's a, that's a Lisa Smith favorite. I also like that too. Payday, mm. you don't have. Yeah. Um, we've got the peanut butter cups right here, Annette. Yeah. And we have Heath bars, which are kind of the grown up version of a Halloween candy. Well, do kids want Heath bars? I do. I also do not like toffee. Oh. I'm not a toffee guy. Hmm. It's too hard. See, you're just a kid at heart. Because I don't think kids like Heath Bars. Well, I can do Charleston shoes frozen, because that's the only way to really have them. Mm. But the toffee stuff, I, I always feel like I assume I'm going to break a tooth. Yeah. At some point, so it's, it's a lot. And you'll eat a Charleston shoe frozen. That's interesting. Well, I mean, this is if it's there, but it's not like I'm going out running out and. Maybe I should trick or treat this year. I can tell you, <laughs> the last time I trick or treat, I was like 14 or so. I don't know. I might have been in high school. And it was at that weird age where you don't know whether to stop or not. Mm -hmm. And then we would go and trick or treat around Magnolia, and because we used to be here for the haunted shows back then. And then we'd get back to um, one of our houses, and we would change costumes and go out and do another lap of the same houses. Because you, you knew at that you point you had two costumes back then. Yeah. Well, you could presto change though. You could, or you would just switch costumes with your friend. Yeah, I was going to say you, you and I could just. I, I'll take the mask. You take the top. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And we we'll go around. <laughs> yeah. And then you would want to find, of course, the house, the one house that had the full-size candy bars. Exactly. Right. And right. then you, you would go make, back to them. Yeah. And if you started off the night when you were really young, I would go to my grandparents and you get like a roll of fifty pennies. <laughs> that was uh, like, oh boy. Or that's you get, that's you'd heavy. You get the toothbrush, yeah. or you get something like that. great. Yeah, I was thinking about having a dentist on the show. I thought about it too. Right, I know. Because you know who puts on a killer Halloween party is the folks at Harbor Cove Dental, Dr. Leif Becklin and his wife Stephanie. Oh, really? Awesome, every year. Like, all Halloween the food night? and drink is themed, the whole house is decked out. Like, they mean it. Yeah. It's really cool. So yeah. I thought about that. So, what yeah. street is that? They're in the fort. Oh, yeah. wow. That would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good time. Trick-or-treating at the fort. I never even thought about that. Yeah. Now, what it, you know, I also, before trick-or-treating, I also want to know what happened to bombing. 
which would be eggs and shaving cream all over the yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, what happened to it? I mean, what, what's wrong with kids these days? You have to do that. Yeah, I know. Well, this whole thing of trick-or-treating for weeks at a time, I mean, last night in Peabody was trick-or-treating night. Oh, really? It's almost a full week before Halloween. You remember right? when it was canceled here in Gloucester? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> that was so ridiculous. So it's so scheduled. There's no spontaneity. There's no trick. Right, the yeah. trick is gone. So yeah. there's one, so the, one problem I have with trick or treaters is because I don't have kids, I don't know who is showing up at my door when the, these characters show up. You don't I know can't, who they are. I can't keep up with anything like that anymore. Yeah. So you just cheer them on, like just reach in and grab whatever you want, you know. But and I'll tell you the one thing I don't like about trick or treating is all the trick or treating bags now are saved for all of the parades that go on throughout this city throughout the year. So if you're doing like the Horribles Parade and you're throwing candy out from the trucks and the floats and all that, kids have trick-or-treat bags loading up on like it. Like the pumpkin, the plastic Full pumpkin, they're filling. trick-or-treat bags. Shopping bags are filling up with candy. Hmm. That's on the parents. Yeah, there's something not right about that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I get no trick-or-treaters. I shouldn't. Oh, really? Yeah. I live in probably the creepiest house in Pond Cape Van. It's a stone house in the dark a long windy driveway mm -hmm. or really yeah i mean you can see it from the street but it's it's definitely a perfect halloween house but um nobody comes because it's too scary we've had hit or miss years where i'm over by eastern avenue by just variety so we've had years where no one's been around and then like the following year it is so packed that we're literally handing out like potatoes and ice <laughs> and now we're, here, we're, just, we're out of everything in the house yeah. yeah, well, we get the candy every year, and then I think maybe the one year we said, come on, just we're just going to eat it ourselves. Why are we doing this? I think somebody showed up. Oh, really? It was really, really sad. It's yeah. really sad. So. Well, we also, I could have, I have a fire pit in my yard, too. So if we ever had a fire, it would invite people to come and, oh, and find us. That's a nice idea. But then we got a 170-pound Mastiff a couple of years ago, and now if he sees anything and barks, or he stands up on the deck literally and looks around the corner, and the kids get terrible, because they don't know if it's fake or not, and then they realize it's real. Yeah. And so we haven't handed out candy in two years now. But you know what, that's even better, because you're the house with the scary dog, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, for and against yeah, you. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, but I mean, that's you need some scary stuff. Like, look at this place, I and mean, this is kind of scary. This, this is castle. awesome what they've done this year, what right? they do every year here, and it's so cool that they, they've, they've it feels like the castle's turned the corner in a positive way. Oh, they've had also they're uh, um, inserting all sorts of new programming here, new initiatives. Uh, we were talking with uh, Executive Director Linda Harvey earlier, and they're making it much more accessible to the public and the children. So it's exciting to be a part of and to, and to actually witness the, that turnaround happen. But I want to hear what it was like when you came as a kid. I had no idea they did this thing for the. That I month. think they've been doing it since '86, but they were just doing it under different themes. I think there was. Um, wow. Yeah, John Pettibone was on Now We're Here earlier, and he, he was a former curator, talks. and he was Dr. Hannibal Lecter. But there was like Bram Stoker's Dar Dracula was here for like 10 years. That was uh, the theme that they used to do. So was it Halloween night? Like, would you come as a kid Halloween there night? Was, no, they would have these, the haunted um, castle was going on for the, throughout the month of October. They were oh, special okay, dates. Okay, okay. And I thought it was something like volunteer college I'm students nearby ball. would put on, and I think it's still that way. Um, you know, it would be in character mm. and do all the decorations and et cetera, et cetera. But I will say, like, it, it, maybe it was because I was a kid. The line to get in was out of control because it's a long walk to get down from the parking lot to the to the, the drawbridge. So you park at Stage 4 the Park. Entrance. Well, I was a Magnolia kid, so oh, we could yeah. get over this way. But the line to get in was like, it, it was an hour long wait. Wow. Just to, to make your way in here. Yeah. Um, so that was always really cool. The other thing, too, growing up around here was we could get in every now and then when <laughs> off hours you would sneak in yeah we could sneak in oh my gosh yeah there were places you could sneak in and i don't know swim once in a while yeah that that happened too when we were really young that is very cool i That's believe the statute cool. of limitations uh, makes it safe for me to say that yeah but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um but i mean geez it's we've always said that hammond castle is one of the very few crown jewels of Cape Ann, like it really, it may be the. Yeah, but you lived on this side where it's part of the culture. Yes. On my side of Cape Ann, I just don't think about it that much, mm -hmm. you know? And it's wonderful to be here on Halloween just for yeah. that reason and to sort of feel this whole vibe. But I think it's even cooler that it was part of your neighborhood. 
you know, and part of your thing to do. I know. It was, there's always been this question about how, you know, what will bring Magnolia back to its old glory from when it was a big resort town. Mm. I don't know. I mean, if, if, like, if Hammond Castle were in downtown Magnolia or in the little village, like, that would be a totally different story. It would be such a draw there. Yeah, it's right. just away enough, you know, or just far enough from Lexington Avenue or uh, Magnolia Beach. Right. Um, that it's a little problematic, you know, like most Magnolia, like you just can't walk over. Right, exactly. You know? uh, but it is one of the very few true destination places here in Cape Ann on the North Shore. So. Well, when I got out in the parking lot, there were three young women from Mexico. Oh, who really? had jumped out of their Uber and were asking if the place was open. That's funny. We were actually testing the Wi-Fi and everything else down here, and I was outside, and there were all kinds of people just walking around taking pictures, even though the castle's closed until they open up for the haunted, you know, the Halls of Darkness. Time. Everybody loves a castle. For real. Everybody does, right? And yeah. there's so many weird, like, amazing facets to it and nooks and crannies and stories everywhere. So that's why I love the story about just like, kitchen help or personal chef yeah. and cook. Like, that's awesome yeah. to, to know that. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe someday we'll get Laura Lee. Yeah. Sit with us and we'll tell try. us more and, stories. And we'll be back. All right, so we want to, let's rifle through some more of this candy. I'm still eating candy, yeah. You are. Um, the Snickers, I couldn't resist having some of that. Snickers is good. All right, Milk Duds. You, no, you're kind of shaky about well, it. Well, they're for the movie theater. That's what I think. I don't see them as Halloween candy. I see them as movies. Interesting. So what else? So Junior Mints, Twizzlers and all that, that's movie theater movie candy. Movie theater, yeah. I'd be psyched for Junior Mints, though. I love them. I kind of would be too with Halloween. I think the Junior Mints, I, I feel uh, like the excitement clicking in to my Halloween candy bag, seeing Junior Mints. Mm. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Can, you, can we categorize Milk Duds with Sugar Babies? You know, like Sugar Daddies and Sugar Babies? Is it almost the same thing? It's just caramel and coated in chocolate? I think so. And milk the Duds aren't sugar, bad. sugar Babies are really chewy, right? And Tootsie yeah. Rolls, we don't have Tootsie Rolls here. I had the bag yesterday, I was like, because eh, the thing in the mixed bag of Tootsie Rolls was so weird. Yeah. It was like the, um, you know, the Dum Dum Lollipops and a few other, and then the weird fruity Tootsie Rolls. Oh, they're not Tootsie are, yeah. Rolls, but That's they're, not Tootsie yeah, it was all that stuff. Like, no way, this is, this yeah. is a high-end show we're trying to put on here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, and here's our traditional Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Love I'm it. All, yep, exactly. I'm a big Reese's fan. Uh, room temperature, ice cold, I don't care, it's awesome. Do you know, my poor children, when they went trick-or-treating, their grandmother would say, may I please have all your Reese's peanut butter cups? Oh, she forced them? <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> what a move. Right, I know. That's so a, that's a they have to give them up. Yeah, and, the, and the saddest thing about Friendly's leaving town was their Reese's peanut butter cup Sunday. Oh, Because they... that was a monster. That was yeah, so good. That was really good. You would get a full peanut butter cup on top on the whipped cream. That was an amazing thing. I shared a couple of those with my kids. That was the only way they got a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, I think. Oh my God, I can't wait for our ice cream episode. That's gonna be a big one. I know. We'll have to do that sometime next summer. We really need to emphasize to people listening that we are looking for guests. We're looking for home cooks yeah. who want to be on the show, feature one of your favorite recipes, tell us about one of your favorite recipes, tell us food stories. We are, um, we're still kind of getting up and going as thus a show like this, right? right? But um, we're anticipating in the new studio to have a great space and to sort of have more formally organized shows. We'll get there, Heather. Yeah, we'll get there. Here's another question for you. What's the difference between crunch and crackle? And why? We also don't have a Nestle's Crunch, do we? Oh, no, there it is. I'm holding <laughs> it. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Um, it's essentially the same thing, except the crackle seems like... I actually might prefer crackle, although it's supposed to be a poor person's version Can we find out? Of, Will you open crunch. that up? Let's what do you open up? A crunch? I'm opening up a crunch. How about on set? Crackle and crunch, yes or no? David's a meh, Alana's a meh, Becky, yeah, Matt, whatever. Jeez. People should put messages on our Facebook page yeah, telling us how they feel. <sighs> yeah, my Next time, wear a different really mask. Well. All right, so here's your <laughs> crackle. Okay, here's my crunch. Look at the back. My crunch looks way bigger than this. Oh. Here's this back. Oh, way more nuts in a crunch. Way, oh, way well, more crunch cr Yeah, the, the, crunch. the crunch stuff. All right, let's break it in half. And I got a, my Hershey's logo on the front here, too. And then inside, I don't have a whole lot of anything going on in there. You, yeah. I, can actually I think see crunch the, is cr better. Yeah, there you go. So here, you taste that one. I'm going to taste... Crunch? Crunch. All right. You know... Crackle. They should do a dark chocolate version of a Nestle's Crunch. I think I like crackle better. Here's my final question for you, Heather. Mm-hmm. 
you've done some world traveling. A little bit. When you've had chocolate outside of mm -hmm. North America or the States and it tastes completely different. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and you have that standard Americanized mm -hmm. Hershey'd chocolate. What do you, I mean, what are your thoughts on, you know, do well, you feel like you've been gypped here in the States? A little bit, but this is one thing I know that when chocolate went to Europe, they tempered it. Is that the right oh, term? Oh, yeah, really? That's not the right term. But they, it's, they did the thing that made it glossy and shiny, right? Mm. And when it was still in Central America and Mexico, it's not glossy or shiny. Have you ever had Mexican chocolate? No. I, well, yes, I have. I have, yeah. Okay, it's almost an entirely different thing. Yep. It has kind of a toothiness to it and a chalkiness to it. And I like that a lot more. And I think what happened is America got the version of chocolate that had gone to Germany and Austria and, and that part of Europe, mm -hmm. where they embraced chocolate and they added sugar to it. In Mexico, it didn't have sugar. So they turned it into that whole European chocolate style. And we got the worst version of that, which is tons of right. sugar and the shiny kind of characterless stuff. Now, I went to New Zealand a few years ago mm -hmm. and visited the Cadbury factory there. That's where it's based out of, I think, um, near Christchurch. And the, you could sample liquid chocolate there. Mm. And that was the best thing I've ever tasted. Yeah, right. Chocolate-wise, it was so good. But then, of course, once you're outside of the States, it feels like they put chocolate on weird things. Like, I'm, I'm going to be back in Iceland uh, this December, and this was the same in the case in Australia New Zealand as well. It's black licorice covered in chocolate. They adore it or bits wow. of orange, or it's strange. They yeah. like things so strong up there, Yeah. right? But black licorice, oh my God, like the entire, like just think, imagine a Snickers bar, but it's a big bar of black licorice coated in chocolate. Wow, yeah. that is an intense thing. Yeah. Huh. Well, orange slices I can see with chocolate, mm -hmm. or candied orange slices. I like... Um, ginger, candy I, ginger. I like chocolate oranges. Yeah. Right. You know, you can get those and actually yes. peel them off into sections. I like those things. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Halloween candy, American Halloween candy, uh, is its own class, right? It is, right. Yeah. You're right. So uh, super sugary. And my complaint about so many things mm. is when corn syrup replaced sugar. The taste of things just became very much the same. I mean, like the difference between our crackle and our crunch. If you, you almost wouldn't even know it was chocolate. It's just so sweet. That's true. You know, so. So at the end of the day, though, do you consider yourself as having a sweet tooth? Yes, I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I really like sugar. And yeah. you always like, is, uh, people seem to be either they have the sweet tooth or they love the salt instead. I mean, I can do both. I can do both. I love both. It's hard walking by a dessert table. I can walk by a bowl of chips. Dessert I can stuff. definitely walk by a bowl of chips. Yeah. Chips, yeah. The dessert, yeah. The, but see, I don't want dessert after dinner. I want dessert at four or three. <laughs> oh, do you really? Three. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I love it. So. Awesome. Well, what do you think? Well, I think um, I hope we were able to provide our viewers with a little bit of creepy stuff. This was a really little bit awesome. Of yeah. Halloween. I mean, you guys tell us what you think about Halloween candy. Yeah. And a few stories about Hammond Castle. Yeah, the, the Hammond Castle stuff the was kitchen. great. Yeah, we yeah. hope you enjoyed that. And then I don't know where we're going to be next. We, if we can do, if we piggyback on another now we're here, um, I know we're going to be at the open door just before Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. that could be a special one. Right. Uh, we're going to be at Cape Ann Animal Aid in early December. Yeah, so we that have to. Pet we, food, we could get something going there. We need some special guests for that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you make special treats for your pets, if you, um, I don't know. Bring your pet. We'll give them treats. That could be. We could have a doggy parade that <laughs> right? night, too. Yeah. You know, I want to see your Mastiff. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's twice your size, Heather. Okay, I'll bring Martha. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Halloween. Okay, happy Halloween to and you, And we'll see you all next time on Short and Sweet.